got your Instant Pot. Awesome. Now you need to actually take it out of the box. Don't be scared of it because with these five tips for Instant Pot success, you can't go wrong. You're going to love it. Go ahead, pull it out of the box. I'm here with you. Probably like a lot of you guys out there, I am a member of the official Instant Pot Facebook group. This is huge, it's massively popular. And right now it has about 1.2 million people on it uh, and it's continuing to grow. I see the same questions over and over and over on the Facebook group. And it's a lot of new people that are getting their Instant Pot, they're super excited and they're a little bit confused and yes, they're a little bit scared. So this video is to answer what I think are the top five questions that I see on that Facebook group. The first number one question I see is, wow, why does it take so long? Everybody thinks they get an Instant Pot and they're gonna have dinner on the table in five minutes. Sorry guys, that's just not true. It takes time to come to pressure. It's a pressure cooker, you have to have liquid in it, it builds up pressure, and then the starting time begins. So when you see recipes on Pinterest or Facebook or other sources, and they say things like, Instant Pot Wings in five minutes, that's kind of misleading. It takes time, so you have to have time to pressurize, and time to release the pressure. So do not be fooled by those little tag lines that say five minutes this, three minutes that. It will take longer. Now, I have recently written an Instant Pot authorized cookbook. It actually will be released in May. I'm super excited. Uh, but in this cookbook, I make a note of actual cooking time and total time. And those are different. And I will tell you, yes, it takes longer to pressurize and depressurize, but still, it is significantly faster than cooking in a traditional manner. So just understand when you are reading a recipe that you do need to make sure you add a little bit of time to pressurize and depressurize, and then you will have an accurate count of the time it takes to put a recipe together. All right, so the next thing that comes up all the time is What's with all these different ways to release the pressure? You've got quick release, you've got natural release, and yes, you even have a thing called slow release. It's pretty simple, but you do have to understand it when you're cooking in your Instant Pot. So, first things first, with any recipe that requires pressure cooking, which frankly is almost all of them out there for the Instant Pot, you have to first make sure that your knob is turned to ceiling. Now, depending on your model, it might be straight up and down, it might be off to the side. This particular model, it's right here on the side and you put it to ceiling. That way it allows the Instant Pot to come to pressure. Then, when the recipe says release the pressure, you do have to pay attention to whether it says do a quick release, a natural release, or a slow release. And here's the difference. Quick release, you just flip it to venting. It will come out fairly quickly and, hence the name, quick release. Uh, the steam will come out and then you can take the lid off when it's done. Now, how do you know that it's done? Well, that's pretty simple. This little button here, uh, this peg, it's down right now and it's not pressurized. When the pot comes to pressure, it will pop up to seal the steam. Then you release your pressure and when that little peg drops back down, then you know you can open it. It's a great safety feature. Pay attention to it. That's how you know you can open your Instant Pot. Now, for natural release, what does that mean? Well, you've got your vent over to ceiling because you just cooked the food, and then your timer counted down to zero. If a recipe says naturally release, all that means is you just let it sit there, and gradually that pressure will decrease. Some recipes will say naturally release for five minutes or 10 minutes. Some will say, all natural release, and that means just let it release until this pin drops down. That can take a while, depending on what you have in it. Now, the last one that comes up every once in a while is slow release. I use a slow release when I'm cooking foods with a lot of starch because a quick release, some of the starch might come through the vent. You don't really want that happening. So a slow release means you've got it to ceiling, you're ready to vent, and you have to physically grab a hold of it and just 
little by little turn it. It'll come out slowly, but it will definitely come out of the bed. So little by little, as it releases more of its pressure, turn it a little bit more. More of its pressure, release it a little bit more until all the pressure is gone. And that's it. Now you know the difference between quick release, which is often QR, natural release, which is NR, or slow release, which most people write out. Okay, tip number three, how to deal with the dreaded burn indicator. Now sometimes during cooking of a recipe, you'll see right here on the display, it will say burn. That's not good. You don't want that. So let me explain a little bit about how this works and why that happens. The Instant Pot is a pressure cooker, okay? So what's important to know is that you have to have enough liquid in your recipe. It requires liquid and volume of space to come to pressure. When there's not enough liquid, the contents get too dense and it blocks the heating element at the base of the pot. So if you look here, obviously you all know you have your trivet. This is what you put things on top of in some recipes. And you've got your pot here. You do not want the bottom of this pot to burn. So you have to make sure there's enough liquid instead of just solid straight down on the base of this pot. So if that happens, and it does happen, and yes, it's happened to me too, what that means is you have too much going on down here and you need to scrape it off. You can do this with your food in the pot. It's not difficult. This happens if you saute something to brown it a little bit. Make sure you get the brown bits off the bottom of your pot. Use a wooden spoon, add a little bit of liquid to deglaze the pan and scrape it off. Put your lid back on and go ahead and restart the cycle. It's not difficult, but you do need to deal with it. But it will finish. When that happens, it means you probably didn't have enough liquid, which maybe means you didn't follow a great recipe that was tested in the Instant Pot. Shameless plug for my book that's coming out in May where I tested every single recipe to make sure it works. Um, or you really just need to add a little bit more liquid. It's not difficult. Do it. Don't be scared of it. Put it back. Turn it back on. Fire it up and it will cook. Okay, my number four tip is actually maybe the most common thing I hear on the Facebook group. And that is the ring inside the lid smells after you cook with it. That's a little bit true. There's no way around it. The lid on the inside has this silicone ring and it does a fabulous job sealing the pressure in. However, it can absorb some of the odors. So a lot of people ask, what do I do? How do I clean it? How do I avoid that? Well, the first answer is you really can't avoid it. The second answer is to clean it, you just pop it out. You can either wash it with soap. I've heard some people put it outside in the sunshine. That's supposed to help. I don't know if it does or doesn't. Put a comment below if you've done that. I would love to know if that worked for you. Or some people actually buy replacement of these silicone rings and they buy two. So one is for sweet foods, one is for savory foods, and they just change them out. It's very easy to change out. You just lift it out, put in the one for sweet if you're doing some sort of fabulous dessert, and then you just pop it right back in. So once it's popped back in, you just cook it, whether it's a sweet or savory dish, and you really won't have that problem. One tip I have, that's very important to the odor in the ring issue is do not store your Instant Pot with the lid on. It will trap those odors. You do not want that. When you store it, just simply turn the lid upside down and store it like that. It fits just as well and it really allows it to air out. And frankly, I don't honestly have that problem. So I think that's a great solution. I think getting a couple of extra rings is also a good idea. I will put a link below. If you are inclined to order a couple of extras for sweet and savory, go for it. I know that that solution works. Now for tip number five, just because something can be cooked in the Instant Pot doesn't mean it should. And I think it's really, really important for your long-term success with your Instant Pot to understand it really can cook almost anything. There's no doubt about it. However, some things like a nice ribeye or a beautiful prime rib, really you should stick with traditional methods, a cast iron skillet for the ribeye or a hot, hot oven for the prime rib, and you'll get fabulous results that way. 
remember what this is for use it for all of the wonderful things it does like soups and stews and and carnitas and desserts lava cake and, and cheesecake and it does all of these wonderful things it really doesn't do everything so don't try to do everything in your instant pot and there you have it the top five tips for instant pot success if you have other tips that you love put them in the comments below i will add them to my blog at the and if you're looking for more tips i've got a whole section on it in my book that's coming out in may so go ahead take it out of the box don't be scared of it. It's not going to hurt you. You will love your Instant Pot.